every class probably learns about plants and seeds, but not every class has Ms. Frizzle for a teacher. When Ms. Frizzle does something, she goes all the way. She started by letting us plant a whole garden behind our school. A photographer was coming to take a picture of our garden, so we all wanted it to look its best. To think that these beautiful tomato plants started from tiny seeds, Carlo said. Add some soil, sunshine, water, and some tender loving care, and you've got this great garden. And once that photographer takes our picture, we'll be famous, Carlo said. We could be on the cover of Plant It magazine. Would you like me to autograph your seed packet, Dorothy Ann? I'll think about it, said Dorothy Ann. Phoebe was not as excited as Carlos. I wish I had the beautiful plant I raised at my old school. Tim put the finishing touch on a drawing. Phoebe smiled. That's it. Thank you, Tim, she said. Still, I wish I had the real thing for our picture this afternoon. Miss Frizzle spotted the drawing. Your plant looks lovely, Phoebe, she said. Not to worry, it's a simple matter to stop by your old school on a little field trip. We all piled on to the old school bus. Carlos was worried that we might not get back in time for the photographer. This could take all day. Couldn't we fly or something, Miss Frizzle? Excellent idea, Carlos, she said. Suddenly, the whole bus began to spin. It rose in the air as if it had wings. It did have wings. We were riding in a ladybug. As we flew over buildings and trees, Phoebe began to look nervous. What if Mr. Seedplot sees us, she asked. We never turned into ladybugs when he was my teacher. Just then, we all saw a school below. Phoebe stared. There it is, she gasped. The bus swooped in below through the school's garden. It looked like a jungle. Here's the perfect landing pad. I mean, pedal, said Miss Frizzle. The bus landed with a bounce and crawled along the pedal of a huge flower. We crawled one step too far. Suddenly, our ladybug bus slid into something wet and slippery. We're stuck in some goop, Ralphie yelled. It's called nectar, Dorothy Ann said. Follow me, class, said the frizz. She opened the doors and slipped out into the lake of nectar. We didn't know it then, but Mr. Seedplot could have reached out and picked us. Phoebe's plants certainly have grown well, he said to himself. She worked hard on them. I really should take one to her new school for her. Mr. Seedplot heard a buzz and looked up. Ah, bees. I won't disturb their work right now, he said, turning to a patch of tomato plants. We also saw the bees coming, and they were headed right into our flower. Yikes! Air raid! shouted Arnold. Glory be, said the frizz happily. As soon as these bees drink enough nectar, then we can crawl out of here. All aboard the lady bus, please. Next stop, Anther. Dorothy Ann is amazing. Even upside down, she could remember what she had read that morning. The anther is the part of the flower that makes pollen, she said. There we were, on top of the anther, with bees buzzing all around us. It was then that Phoebe caught sight of her old teacher. It's Mr. Seapot, she yelled. He'll see us. Do something. Fast. Miss Frizzle stayed calm. No problem, she said cheerfully. We'll get out of here the same way the pollen does. Miss Frizzle pressed a yellow button and we shrank again. Now we were as small as a grain of pollen.
Whew, said Phoebe. That was close. Carlos was not so happy. We'll never get to back to school in time for the photographer, he grumbled. Be of good cheer. We're on our way, said Miss Frizzle. Hang on, she called, as the leg of a passing bee swept us up and away. Off we flew, stuck to the leg of that bee. It was a short ride. At the very next plant, the bee bumped a flower and brushed us off, along with a lot of pollen. Here we are, Ms. Frizzle announced. Where? Phoebe asked. Tim showed her his picture. I think we're on this center part. The stigma, Tim said. The bee had dropped a lot of pollen here. With a big sneeze, Arnold bumped into a grain of pollen, knocked it over, and fell down some kind of tunnel underneath. Phoebe looked down the tube. Mr. Seaplot will never spot us down there, she said, and she hopped into the tube and slid down. Ms. Frizzle beamed. That's the spirit. Take chances. Make mistakes. Check out pollen tubes. Yahoo, she yelled as she, too, jumped down the tube. We all slid to the bottom of the pollen tube. No, now where are we? asked Carlos. Couldn't we just grab one of Phoebe's plants and go back to school? I don't think we need a whole plant, Keisha said. Look at this. She pointed to something that looked like a big rock. It's a seed. I get it, Dorothy Ann said. When pollen from one flower lands on the stigma of another, it grows a pollen tube, finds one of these egg cells, and together they make a seed. Carlos still wasn't happy. No seed can grow into a plant by three o'clock, he said. Not without some help, said Ms. Frizzle. She reached into the bus and pressed a button, and suddenly things went wild. The seeds were growing bigger and sprouting hair. We need to hurry things along a bit, said Ms. Frizzle. Everyone on the bus, please. We all rushed back to the bus. The doors slammed shut, and we drove up and on to one of the biggest seeds. As the seeds around us grew bigger, the flower burst open. We felt the sun shine in and a breeze blowing through the windows of the bus. Suddenly, our seed flew into the air with us on board. Away we flew on the back of our seed, carry long on gusts of wind. Carlos still worried. Can't we go any faster, he asked. Well, Miss Frizzle said, this is pretty fast for a seed, but there are seeds that travel by attaching themselves to dogs or birds or people, she said, eyeing a man on a bicycle. No, croaked Phoebe, that's Mr. Seedplot. But she was too late. Our seed had landed in Mr. Seedpot's hair. Oh, how embarrassing, Phoebe groaned. We were almost home, still stuck in Mr. Seedplot's hair, and we hadn't even been introduced. So we all shouted, Hello, Mr. Seedplot! Everyone except for Phoebe, who was too embarrassed to talk. But when Mr. Seedplot swung his head to see who was calling him, we flew off. That's not, Miss Frizzle announced. She pushed a button. Poof! The bus got big again. She pushed another button. Poof! The seed, which had landed in our garden, grew into a tall plant with beautiful flowers. Ah, there you are, Mr. Seedplot said when he had spotted us. I brought one of Phoebe's plants, but I see that she already has one. Nice to see you again, Miss Frizzle. Phoebe gasped. You mean you've met Miss Frizzle before? She said, Mr. Seedplot smiled. Yes, she's a very special person. We had to agree. Miss Frizzle is special, all right.